it's hard to remember the context of the day it happened. I was mindlessly binging YouTube, just watching whatever happened to be in my recommendations recently. The video I was watching was only tangentially related to the album, talking about AI-generated images and their sometimes disturbing imagery. But it was briefly brought up. The video didn't recommend it at all, even warning against listening to it, but that only made me more intrigued. I'm not the sort of person to back down from a challenging piece of art and will often dive head first into something for that very reason. The album's called Everywhere at the End of Time by The Caretaker. It is a six hour long compilation of other albums by the same artist meant to guide the listener through the experience of dementia patients, with each section covering a different phase of the condition. I don't really want to talk about the history of its production, though, or any of the technical aspects of its production, and I wouldn't be qualified to talk about that anyway. I want to talk about the experience of listening to it. At first, the descent was slow. I distinctly remember not quite knowing where the first album ended and the second began. I had figured it would be that same descent throughout. I listened to it as I was studying or walking to my classes. Mostly it just seemed like old ballroom music. The distortion made it a bit melancholy, but it wasn't anything especially deep or meaningful to me. I just idled on by the sound of the ballroom, reminiscing on memories that weren't mine of dancing slowly into the night with the woman I loved. The music slowly got more distorted or out of key, but that just added to the reminiscent quality. Then the music stopped. I began wondering just how much of the music was just going to be this white noise, this chaotic cacophony of sound and pain. The music was barely even recognizable at all in all the damage, the wear and tear. But even this grew quiet. The noise faded, and the music left with it. Sometimes single notes or hints of a melody would play. Sometimes I would just sit silently in my dorm, waiting into the night, listening for the noise. That left me with lots of time to think about everything. I had always had the image of dying as an old man, with my loved ones around me, dying as I reminisce about all the good times, expectantly looking forward to confronting the afterlife or whatever lies ahead. It had some sense of dignity to it. This had no dignity. How could one confront the afterlife if one forgot the concept of self or that one was even dying? There'd be no friends or family to look back on or lovers to think back to, even as they sit right next to you. To die utterly alone, without even knowing what loneliness is. It was a harrowing experience listening to this album. I remember shutting the album off for the sake of talking to my friends or participating in class, and it was like wool was torn from my eyes. Like the brief moments that remembrance set in before taking the plunge right back into the mire of forgetfulness. As the album winded down, I began to forget what the music even sounded like. All I had were the desperate rumblings and groanings of a mind trying so desperately to remember, of single synapses trying to fire without quite forming any single image, a mind empty and without form. Once it finally did end, I was left completely drained. It haunted my every thought and crept into my dreams. I remember that as I sat at lunch, the noise of the crowd talking sounded like the unending noise from the album. It was like I had just gone through a traumatic event, and to be fair, I kind of had. I was deeply affected by this album. It doesn't haunt me like it used to anymore, but... The journey I took with it will always be at the back of my mind. Its chilling, distorted noise may always send a chill down my spine, and I may always get a brief flash of terror every time I happen to forget something. How did it do this to me? How is it that this album, a work of art made for the sake of public consumption, could have seemingly traumatized me like this? It reminds me of the Necronomicon from the works of H.P. Lovecraft or The King in Yellow 
from Robert W. Chambers. These were both books of dark secrets of the cosmos and the old gods in control of them. Books of secret knowledge that would drive the reader insane if they were ever to decipher their truths. These are forbidden works, works that seem to have been made by mankind, yet bring humanity to its knees whenever they come into contact with it. I've always been fascinated by forbidden artwork or literature. What work could possibly be so terrible or dangerous so as to be censored like that? One has to wonder what their motivations are for censoring it. If the reason it makes people so seemingly dangerous is that they learn the truths that everyone else is covering up, or maybe it could be made in such a way to somehow unleash our primal instincts or awaken us to our deepest fears. What secrets could man have found in the dark places of the world, and what made them so terrible that they were covered up? I'm Thomas Fulkerts. Welcome to the Forbidden Library. Heart aches, heart aches. My loving you meant only heart aches. Your kiss was such a sacred thing to me. I can't believe it's just a burning memory. Heart 